Um, hi, everybody. My name is Sarah, and I'll be moderating this session. Your presenter for today is Jasmine. Um, we are very excited to bring you advanced programming from Husky Robotics. Before we begin the presentation, I want to introduce myself and my co-host. Um, I am a senior at Naperville North, and this is my fourth year in robotics. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to go over how this presentation will continue. I've muted all of you for now, but as the meeting goes on and you think of questions, uh, please select the raise hand function located by clicking participants. And once I've called on you, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. We strongly encourage you all to ask a question in the chat if that's more convenient so we can keep track of asked questions. Jasmine or myself will ask these questions for you guys and you can all respond by either typing in the chat using the symbols in the chat or using the reactions feature on the bottom bar. Please use the chat and the reactions feature appropriately. I would also like to let you know that these presentations are being recorded. Now that we got that out of the way, I will let Jasmine introduce herself. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the advanced programming presentation. I'm Jasmine, your presenter today. Just to give you guys a brief introduction, I am also a senior, but I go to Naperville Central. This is also my fourth year, year of robotics, and I have been a programmer for all four years. I personally think programming is really important and cool because the robot won't move without code. Well, I'm really excited to see you guys all interested in advanced programming, and let's get started. So I will begin sharing my screen. All right, everyone can see the PowerPoint? We good? Cool. All right, the first topic we will be covering is advanced blocks. First, we will be covering logic blocks. What are they? Well, logic blocks are basically conditionals, meaning that they use logic to determine what piece of code should be run. They also contain Booleans, and Booleans are pretty simple, as these are variables that can either be true or false. And Booleans are really important because they will be used in logic statements and loops. So the first logic block we will be covering is the if-else block. This block takes in a Boolean, and if it is true, it will run the code in the block. And another way to think about it is if condition evaluates to true, then do the block inside the if statement. Kind of a hypothetical situation that we can example is that like if it is raining outside, if that condition is true, then the action that we would want to put inside of the block is, oh, bring an umbrella outside. And you, to add extra conditions, you can use the else features by clicking that plus icon on the bottom left. And going off of the rain example, if it's not raining, then you might want to bring sunglasses outside because it's sunny. And another example that's more robot related is if the color sensor returns, if the color sensor is like returns black is true, maybe it's sensing a line, then the action you want to put inside of the block is to stop the robot. And else, then you would want to keep driving instead. So here we have some logic blocks. And these are the actual Boolean variables. Again, these will only evaluate to either true or false. These blocks are different from other blocks in that they are variables. And like, again, the information they hold is true or false, and they can only be used in other blocks. And they are most commonly used in loops or if-else statements. And just to kind of go over the different categories you have, of Boolean, um, Boolean variables. We have the comparison feature, which is pretty self-explanatory. It checks if like two different variables are equal to each other, less than or greater than. And you also have these evaluators and or not, and returns true and only true if both of the conditions are true, while or returns true if only 
if like either the first condition or the second condition is true. And the not operator basically flips whatever the condition is. So if the condition returns true, putting a not in front of it will make it false. And it goes the same the other way. So if the condition is false and put it not in front of it, the condition will evaluate to true. And then at the bottom, you have true, your true and false Boolean variables, which is the most basic you can get with Boolean variables. So next, we have loop blocks. And loop blocks are really useful for repeating actions without having to copy and paste the same action like 10 times in your code. So first we have is the repeat block. And this block is a simpler version of the for block, which we will get to in the next slide. And it simply allows you to enter a value for the number of times you want your action to be repeated. And you can think of it of as repeat action for whatever for whatever number of times. And example of where the repeat block might be useful is that if you want to drive your robot in a square. So to do that, we know that the action we would have to take is go drive straight, turn right, and then repeat that action four times. And instead of having to do that set of action have that set of action eight times in your code, you can just put the drive straight turn right inside of a repeat block and have four as the number of repetitions. Uh, okay. So the next block we have is the four block. And this block does pretty much the same thing as the repeat block in that it allows you to repeat an action for a set number of times without having to have that code like repeat actually repeated like eight times. But the key difference is that you get this counter variable which is indexed in this picture and then you, you get to set it to um, some limit. So this is Having that counter variable is really useful in situations where you would want to know what iteration of the loop you are in. Say if you want to drive a square, but you need to pick up an object on like the second point. So going back to logic blocks, you may want to check what, count, what the counter is. And if that counter is like two, meaning that you're on the second point, then you complete the action of picking up that object. And then else, you would just do nothing. So the four blocks gives you a little more functionality with two blocks. And the last block for loop is the forever block. And it's not really kind of forever as in like the way you probably guys probably think. It's just for the um, entire duration of a match. This block is similar to the start block as it can stand on its own and you can only put other blocks in it and it cannot go into another block. And again, whatever actions in this block will be repeated through the duration of a program. And this block is useful for any actions you want to be done repeatedly during a match, such as wanting to record what your location is for the entire match. The next thing we'll be covering is wire variables and math. And these just give additional functionalities that make your program from simple to complex. So wires are useful for moving data among blocks. So if you can see in this image um we first add a a to 50 and we take whatever that sum was and then we use it again for a multiplication later in this sequence of blocks and math blocks are the typical like addition subtraction multiplication division and that is really useful for offsetting and scaling data 
And the example of this code, we take sensor data that is usually, or the raw output is from zero to 100. And after subtraction, we scale it to from negative 50 to 50. And finally, we have these variable blocks at the beginning. Those are the game blocks. And that allows processes to talk to each other without having wires in between. And variable blocks to store values that can be red or like written. And as you can see from the previous example, that line of line following code is pretty long. And in that situation, you might want to use something called my blocks. And what are my blocks? My blocks are little pieces of code that you can reuse multiple times, like for line following, uh, line square, etc. And the reason that we use them is they make code much more readable. There's like no need to copy and paste the same bit of 10 times. And it really just condenses down the code, which is why judges really love them. So, as we can see, as this example, we have this long sequence of blocks, and that can all be condensed into this single block of code. So my blocks is a very powerful tool that you guys should really use. The next topic we will be covering is navigation. So one of the more advanced techniques for navigation is line squaring, which is um, instead of squaring against walls, you can kind of apply the same logic using light sensors with a straight line. So using two light sensors on the front two corners of the robot, the logic behind line squaring is you approach the line until one of the sensors sense the color of the line, which is black in this case, and stop the motor on the side of the light sensors that has sensed the black and continue on the other side um, until the sensor on that side senses the black. So on the picture, you can see like the first image is when one sensor senses the line and then it should slowly adjust until both sensors are on the line. And then you see now your robot is perfectly square with the line. And this is also super useful because with SLL robots, errors tend to accumulate the more you uh, drive on during the match. So using these line squaring techniques just helps to keep your robot accurate and it helps in situations where there isn't any walls nearby. Next technique, advanced technique for navigation is line following. And line following is technically edge of line following. The EV3 light sensor can sense completely on, completely off the line edge, and also varying degrees of each. Using this um, functionality, this like characteristic of the sensors, we can intentionally drift off the black line until we sense light, and drift back until we sense black again, and continue this process to it up the line without drifting away. And then with line following, you can, it's again, to help you with precision and keep you following a straight line, basically. So the next topic is troubleshooting, which is super important, as you'll probably find out with coding. Things usually don't work out on the first try. And I would say for me, at least I spent 70% of my time as a programmer trying to find bugs and debugging. So this is probably what you guys will be mostly doing as programmers. So here are some general EV3 troubleshooting tips. First big one is use Bluetooth. And with Bluetooth, you can watch ex execution as it runs and also watch or record some your input. And if you don't have Bluetooth on your computer, there are a few alternative options you can use. You can add a beep to your program to, know, to let you know like where in the program you are. You can write sensor values to the screen. And kind of similar to the beep, you can add a stop block to test up to certain points. And you could also download 
So like that, you can download selected to only run a portion of your code. And the final thing for troubleshooting is you can try logging your variables to a file or upload by USB. So here's another support view is also super useful for troubleshooting. And why? It's because it's the e an easy way uh, to measure distance or sensors and how you get port view on your EV3 is to switch through the brick application to find port view. Then you hook up the motor and turn it to view the distance traveled. This makes it this, is, this makes it easy to get your robot from point A to point B or to measure the reflected light intensity of a line you want to follow. And Bluetooth basically serves the same function, but it's a different method and it might be a bit easier. So the final thing we will be covering is alternative programming languages. So uh, FLL actually supports a variety of different, well, there's a lot of resources out there with different languages they can use other than the basic block code. And one of them is matrix code, and this is um, both graphical and text-based. It's supported by both Microsoft and Lego, and as you can see, it's the first image to the right. If you guys are familiar with Scratch, this might be something for you. Another alternative programming language is C-based, is Robot C. It is C-based, and this is a pretty established language. It does have um, debug support. It, it has the fully, oh, sorry. It has a fully integrated software debugging. So that's a pretty useful term. And this is used by a lot of other first teams. And this, as compared to Maker Code, is more text based, but it still like has that block structure. And the one last one is EV3 MicroPython, and this is Python based. And as you can tell from the last image, that this is pretty much just purely text based. But this is this language is pretty easy to get working because there's a lot of good document documentation for setup. And if you're feeling more advanced, I would recommend this language because it's probably closer, the closest to languages you will encounter later being like completely text-based. And also uses BSDDA code, which is what I use for programming robotics. All right. That is all I have for my presentation. Do you guys have any questions? Okay. Oh, thanks for all of your nice messages. All right. You guys are too sweet. If not, Anaya, should we release them early? Yeah, you guys can go ahead and leave. If you have any other questions, feel free to attend our Q&A at the end of the day. Uh, thank you.